you talk about the history of video games, there's a couple of games that you have to talk about, like Pong and Pac-Man and Super Mario Brothers, that really influenced the entire video game industry. And Xevious is one of those titles. Xevious influenced the vertical shooting game genre more than any other game, and is, in my opinion, one of the best video games ever made. And incredibly challenging, frustrating, and enjoyable all at the same time. This game was released in 1982 and has fortunately seen a comeback on Xbox Live. And I think Xbox Live is tremendous. And the Xbox Live Arcade bringing back the old school games from the 80s and platformers from the 90s. And I don't have a, I, I can't say enough good things about Xbox Live. Not only does it bring back these great old school games, but it brings them back in high definition. You can play them through your HDMI cable into an HD TV. It's just tremendous. Xevious is presented in its original native aspect ratio as you would have played it in the arcade, which is like a television laid on its side. It probably looks very familiar to those of you who have played games like Raiden, and there's so many games in this genre now. As a general rule, I think they're more popular in Japan than they, than they are over here in the States. I think that's unfortunate, but I personally like this genre a great deal. It's challenging, it's fun. As you know on this show, I love being the lone, daring starfighter against countless enemies, impossible odds, on a questionable, vague mission. <laughs> that usually uh, doesn't matter anyway, because you know, what's the point of this game is to get through it, to have fun, to rack up points and to shoot things and watch them blow up. Xevious came out in the arcade in 1982 and has since been seen on game systems like the Atari 7800 and the NES. And in fact, the original Classic Game Room series we reviewed the Atari 7800 version and a version for the PlayStation, which they remade. As you can see from the screen, you have two different weapon options. And that's one of the things that makes Xevious unique, but, but for starters here, you have your lasers, your twin cannons, I think they're lasers, maybe they call them something else, and your bombs. So you have to uh, shoot, shoot your enemies in the air, and also bomb the enemies on the ground. And they're all shooting at you from different directions, and it's very challenging. What makes this game decidedly different from Raiden 3, for instance, which is one I recently re reviewed, is that you can't power up your weapons to have this arsenal that fills the entire screen with your weaponry. You're basically limited to the two weapons that you start with. So instead of, so instead of getting that massive, huge shotgun burst of red bullets that most vertical games have, or a special weapon that you can blow up and then eliminate all enemy fire when it's about to kill you, you really have to rely on some serious skill dodging the enemy fire. Now I generally forget the story of Xevious. You can, re you can find it online, I'm sure. But you do encounter a couple bosses as you continue on in the game. And wave after wave of enemy. The variety of enemies changes on you. And my favorite part of this game, something I've loved since I was a kid and played this on my Atari 7800, is those spinning metal plates that come at you. Nope. At the time, those were just amazing. That kind of graphics in a video game was just unbelievable. Xevious was way ahead of its time. And you can see why it influenced this genre so much. And just these simple things like little tank boats in the water. You can't, just do you can't just bomb them. You have to actually leave them with your bomb and hope that they run into it. So it requires a lot of skill to hit all the enemies in this and rack up serious points. And with Xbox Live, of course, they give you the added incentive of going for gamer points, which are addictive and a lot of fun to collect for no apparent reason. But the other great thing about Xbox Live, of course, is you can see how your score ranks up against everybody else and friends of yours. What's really incredible about Xevious is that this game came out in 82, and it really doesn't look any different than newer games today. Maybe it's slightly different, but I mean, there's only so much you can really do with a two-dimensional vertical scrolling game before it starts getting ridiculous. And I, I, I'm not a big fan of adding in all those three-dimensional polygons and crap floating all over the screen. I think keeping it simple like this is the way to go. And that's why 
I like Seabees so much in games like Raven 3. Now, I'm generally not a huge fan of using the Xbox 360 controller on this game. It's definitely challenging. I prefer the arcade style joystick and buttons, but you know, what are you going to do when you just don't have a stand-up Seabees arcade machine in your basement? Xbox Live is about the best thing you can have. So it does require some skill to hammer away at the button and also remember to bomb your enemies at a precise time. This is, a, this is not a game where you can just hold down the fire button. It does give you an option to do a manual shot where you just fire at the rate that I'm firing at now. And also I use my other trigger to hold down the auto fire. So if a wave of enemies comes at me, I hold down that trigger and it lets off a machine gun burst of shots. But you cannot just hold down a consistent auto fire for the entire game. And for whatever reason, the music, although it just repeats itself over and over again, it never gets old. And maybe that's just because Xevious is that awesome. Here are the metal plates. And just look at those. Twenty years ago, that was incredible. They're tough, too. You have to dodge those things. You can't blow them up, so you have to dodge them. And then the enemy fire is coming at you, and then you get caught in between the enemy fire and the spinning metal plates, and uh, it kills you. I love to see the resurgence in arcade titles on Xbox Live. And they don't cost much on Xbox Live. A game like this is only about five bucks, and it really has infinite replay value. Even if you went out to find this for your Atari 7800 or NES, it would still cost you at least five or six bucks when you add in the shipping cost. Because, you know, you probably end up finding it on eBay, for instance. But with the Xbox Live, you just download it, and it's no problem. Now, I'm by no means the greatest Xevious player in the world. In fact, I'd like to get a lot better at this game, because it really is one of my favorite games, and always has been. I just need to find the time to sit down and get back into it. One of my favorite game systems is the Atari 7800, and that's one that I grew up with and had when I was a kid. And Xevious was up there with Robocon 2084 as, as my favorite game on the Atari 7800. I've played it for hours and hours and hours, and hours. And I'm glad to see that there's still a lot of interest in Xevious today. If you like this genre, you've never played Xevious before, you owe it to yourself to pick this game up on Xbox Live, or the 7800, or the NES, and you've got to play Xevious. If you're really hardcore, you can go out and buy a real stand-up coin-op Xevious machine like they would have had in the arcades in the 80s, and you can put that in your living room, in your house, and your wife can come home and be like, where's all the furniture? And you're like, well, I put it outside because we got a Xevious machine. You know, and she may start to get red and get mad at you. Well, why do you need furniture when you have a Xevious machine? The whole point is to stand there and play Xevious. I mean, it's only common sense. It's like replacing your dining room table with the cocktail version of Ms. Pac-Man. You, you can eat on that Ms. Pac-Man machine and play Ms. Pac-Man at the same time. Hell, it worked at Pizza Hut. News Hour.